Hey, you. D1. Yeah, you. Welcome. This immaculately clean wonderland is called the Sim Lab. It looks like you're almost ready to take some impressions. But first, you'll need the proper attire. That's better. The first step is to prepare your equipment. You'll need two impression trays, your mixing bowl, and your wide and thin spatula. You'll also need Darwin. First, you'll measure your alginate. Remember one scoop of powder to one unit of water, four scoops for the maxillary, and three scoops for the mandibular. You'll use the small vial to measure the water. The next step is to spray your trays with adhesive. This helps the alginate to not separate from the tray while you're removing it from the patient's mouth. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You don't want to explain too much to your patient. It might scare them. Much better. Now you're ready to mix your alginate. First, pour the powder into the mixing bowl. You can add the water all at once or a little bit at a time. And use the end of your spatula to incorporate the water into the powder. Once that's done, you can begin to cream the alginate against the side of the mixing bowl. This helps to remove bubbles. Now it's time to load the tray with alginate. A great way to prevent blebs is to swipe some alginate on the occlusal surfaces of the teeth. Grab some on your fingers and firmly swipe the lingual and the facial and the occlusal surface on the patient's mouth. Go ahead and place the tray into the mouth, retract the cheeks with your fingers, and press the tray gently upward. Don't push too far or the teeth will come through on the tray. Time to wait. Is the alginate firm? Perfect. You can remove it. Pull gently on the back of the tray and remove it from Darwin's mouth. Be sure to give him a paper towel to clean up with afterward. His face sure is messy. Now let's look at the impression. Are there any tray areas showing through? Do you see the full vestibule? Are there any areas missing? If so, we'll need to do it all over again. Hopefully a little faster this time. That looks perfect. Now, you'll want to gently wrap it in a damp paper towel. If we had a real patient, you would need to disinfect this impression, but since Darwin doesn't have any normal flora, you can skip that step. You'll repeat the process for the other impression. Now it's time to pour up your impression, little D1. This is the wet lab. You'll need to prepare your materials, but first, put down a clean piece of paper don't want to see the professors mad. Also cover the vibrator pad with a wet paper towel. This all helps with cleanup. This is the aqua spence. Make sure it's set to micro stone. Then place your bowl and press tear. Once complete, you can empty a packet of stone into the bowl Place it back on the scale and press start. This should dispense some water. You'll want to mix the stone and water together with your small spatula first. 
Then place the mixing spatula into the bowl and put it on the vacuum spatulator. This helps to remove air bubbles. You'll want to hold on to the bowl until the paddle starts spinning, otherwise you'll have a very big mess. Once it's complete, it will beep. Remove the bowl. You'll turn on the vibrating pad and place your impression on the pad. Add a little bit of stone to the back corner and allow it to flow through all of the teeth. You'll want to make sure there are no bubbles. If there are, you can pop them with your spatula and continue to vibrate it until there aren't any remaining. Once all the teeth are filled, you can continue adding stone. Keep adding stone until you fill the full impression. Then you'll want to add some cones to the top of your cast. This will help the cast to adhere to the base that you'll pour up later. Make sure you clean up after yourself. We aren't your maid! Wipe everything out with a paper towel into the trash can before you rinse it in the sink. We don't want this clogging the drain. You'll leave your cast to dry for 45 minutes or until all the heat dissipates. Then you can either remove the alginate in order to pour up the base or keep the impression on. You can mix the stone for the base by hand. You'll want it a little thicker than you did for the original cast. You'll make a small patty on the plastic plate and set your cast down on top. Make sure your cast is wet. This helps it to adhere to the new base. Use your spatula to flatten out the sides to create a cohesive base with your first cast. Let this dry for 45 minutes. The base will look very messy when you're done, so you'll want to trim it down. Hold it firmly with two hands and press it gently against the grinding wheel. For thicker areas, you'll push a little harder. Once you're done trimming, you may find some air bubbles that you didn't see before in your cast. Fill these in with a little extra stone. Use the compass provided by the professors to make sure your base is level. A little more trimming. Trim it down so there are 90 degree angles on the back and on the base. You may see a few more holes pop up, so fill these in again. Once all your holes are filled and dried, you can sand the cast with some wet sandpaper. Make sure you do this under water. This will make it very, very smooth. The final step is to remove any blebs on the occlusal surface and anywhere on the patient's anatomy. You can do this with your waxing tools. The final product should look something like this. Do you see the land area? There are no blebs, no holes, everything's filled in and smoothed out with some wet sandpaper. Great job on your first cast, and remember, practice makes perfect! Until next time, D1.